This is how to get this cool filterable geo chart effect that I have here in Excel. I'll show you all the features I used to build this. Sit back and relax. This is going to be 10 minutes of chilled out productivity, a little ASMR in my cat here. Well, let's get into it. Okay, I'm going to use a nice dark background color for this. I'm just going to start by dropping in a few circles and rounded rectangles to kind of set up the base of my design. We're going to be dropping in a few circles in this example and use the layering effect to stack them on top of each other. And just to save time, we just copy paste these so that we have multiples of them. And then you just right click format shape and you can do all your formatting over here for different fill colors and styles. So I've given each of those big circles a sort of transparent blue fill over here. It's this blue color at about 86% transparency. Also, if you want to get this cool dashed line effect here, it's just under here there's the ability to change your dash type. This little one in the center just has a transparent fill and it's just an outline in blue. And I've done one little fancy thing here, which is I've added a glow effect that's under this menu here on the right, and I've just given it a large, like, almost 60 point glow in blue that's 80% transparent. And then just layered a few semi-transparent rectangles over that, and a dark rectangle over on the left. This is just the base of our design that we're going to use. So sort of the core element of this design is a little geo chart. And the funny thing is the chart itself doesn't actually have any data in it. We're just using it to create a map for us. So I'm just going to create a little sample table here with some fake data. And then under the insert tab, I'm going to hit maps. And that's going to create a little map just with the areas that I've entered in a different color. But what I'm going to do here is go over to our chart options click into the chart itself. So I've got one of these selected here. And then it can take a second to get the right selection. Head over and we want to just do map area only regions with data. That's going to change our map projection a little bit. You can also change your projection type if you want Mercator or Miller or something else. In this case I think we're going to use a Mercator projection. So I'm going to copy paste this over to our dashboard. First thing I'm going to do is remove the fill and the outline. I'm going to choose a color that we like a little bit better, something a little darker probably for this. And you're going to change your color under this menu here. It's a gradient from your lowest to highest value, so we're just going to actually make these the same color in this case. I'm also going to remove the border. I'm going to give this a shadow as well. And I'll make some final adjustments to my placement and size here. And just for fun on this one, I've given it a little bit of a glow as well, so that it has a little bit of a glow effect like the other elements. Now you'll notice this is on top of these cards, and so I'm going to have to actually move this out of the way. I'm going to hold shift and click each of these card elements, right click and hit bring to front, and that's going to make sure those cards are on top of the map we put in here. For the cards themselves, I'm going to insert a rectangle just like this, and we're going to use this as a separator. How we do that is by giving it a gradient fill. We do that by just selecting gradient fill. I'm going to make sure I remove the outline here. And the gradient is just from like a very light gray that's like 80% transparent to a fully transparent gray. And if you look over here, it just creates this subtle little effect you see to kind of just create a nice little separator that we're going to use. And we're going to do that across all of our cards. Let me show you how we build this first card first because it works the same way for all of them. Each card is going to be a different region. So you, Canada, United States, Mexico, uh, Germany, France, etc. So I'm going to go to our data table. All our data is labeled with each country that it's, that's represented. And I'm going to use that to create a pivot table. To create a pivot table, you just go to insert pivot table over here. I've already added one, so it's grayed out, but you'll see it there. And what we're doing on this is making our rows a date, our values sales, and our filter country. And then we're going to filter it down to the country you want for each one. Then you can literally copy this whole thing, paste it over, and all you're going to have to do is change your country filter to the next country. You can do this for each country, and that'll give you the data you need. But we also want to have the most recent month reported pulled out of the table. It's important this doesn't actually live in the pivot table for what we're going to do. So I'm going to do a little lookup function here. This is just a lookup function. And this lookup function is essentially just going down the column and grabbing the final value and just pulling that out. In this case, I've added a secondary column, which is showing 
how much the value has changed since the previous period. Totally optional if you want to do this, but I think it can be a nice touch so that people know how much something's changed since the previous period. And I did the same lookup function to pull the most recent one. So to create our first chart, we're just going to click into our pivot table, head to the insert tab, go to the line chart option, grab a line chart with markers, and that's going to give us a pivot chart. So this chart is generated from the pivot table. Just cut and paste it over to the worksheet where you've got your dashboard, delete any elements you don't want. In this case, I'm just going to use a trend line. We probably should label this properly, but for this example, it's okay. And then for the chart itself, it's really important we drop out that background color, right? So now you can actually see the chart itself and any outline or anything. And we're gonna just turn the line to a white line. I'll get it sized here first. Uh, voila, there's our nice little trend line. Now for the metrics themselves, we're gonna go to the insert tab and we're gonna grab a text box. You're always gonna have to remove the fill and outline on a text box so it's transparent. Don't know why they make us do that every time, but that's just how it works. Now to tie this text box to the data we have on the other sheet, we just go to the formula bar and hit equals, head over to our sheet, and then click on whatever value we want and hit enter. Now this text box is tied to that, so whenever the cell updates, this is gonna update as well. We're gonna have to restyle it. Unfortunately, it's just something you have to do the first time you link them together, but after that, it'll keep the styling that you give it. And then I'm just gonna insert a few more text boxes for our labels and everything. And as always, do a little styling, but this is our core card. And we'll just replicate this in every single other card. Any elements that you copy-paste, you can copy-paste over and just change the cell references. It's a quick, pretty quick process. Just a little thing to highlight here is I've added the secondary metric here since last month, tied to that value I showed you earlier in the pivot table. There, and once we've repeated that process, we'll have one of these entries for each of our cards. It's filtered in the pivot table, and I've just added these little guidelines here. This is just one of the shapes under the insert tab. If you look in the shapes menu, you'll see these little lines here. I just grabbed one of them, and all I did to get this effect was give it a dashed line and make it about 50% transparent, and that creates this nice little effect you see here. Now in this little section over here, we want to insert slicers. Slicers are what are going to allow us to filter this whole thing. All we do for that is go to our pivot tables, click into them, go to the insert tab and hit slicer. This gives us a bunch of options for what we can filter by. Product segment, anything, anything in your original table you can filter by here. We hit OK and it's going to drop it in. I'm going to copy paste this over into our dashboard and then I'll show you a couple other little tricks. All right, so this is in here. I'm going to update the styling of it just to make it look a little bit better. We can add different numbers of columns. So if I go two columns, you get an effect like this. And then the most important part, you need to right click this and hit report connections and make sure that it's connected to every pivot table you want filtered and every pivot chart you want filtered. So just make sure that it's connected to all of them because by default, it will only be connected to one. Then hit okay. Once it is connected, as you click each button on there, it's gonna update your data dynamically and filter it to that category. You can have multiple filters as well if you want to get more specific or drill in. Uh, you have a multi-select option too here if you want to select multiple categories at once. Works like a charm. This card in the upper left-hand section is built the exact same way as all of our other cards, but this is just the unfiltered data. So it's the aggregate of all the countries. And instead of using a line chart, I just used a bar chart, but followed the same basic process. And voila, before you know it, We've got a big, beautiful dashboard, leveraging a lot of the visual design features that are built right into Excel. We didn't do any custom coding, nothing fancy. We just got a little creative with our design process. And I always say, you don't need to make yours look like this necessarily, but learning all of these features that we use to build complex designs, it's gonna make a difference in anything you're working on. It's gonna improve any work you do. You choose the style that's right for you, and really all I can hope is that people just start to use these design features a little bit more. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in, everyone. Hope that was helpful. Have a lovely time wherever you are in the world. Bye for now.